start out with a meditation today. If you're in a place where it's safe to do so, you can go ahead and close your eyes, take a few very deep, slow, relaxing breaths. With every inhale, you feel more peace and light entering your body and your mind. And with every exhale, you let go of anything that you do not want. And we see ourselves on the top of a beautiful mountain in the center of a circular grove of trees. And in the center of the circle, a bonfire blazes forth, lighting us and the grove up with a sacred golden light. We recognize that this is the light of perfect love and perfect trust, and that it burns away everything that is not like itself. And into this sacred space, we call the presence of our Divine Father and Mother. We ask that they join us and guide us along with all of our teachers, guides, and angels. We ask that our thoughts be guided, our intentions be guided, our actions be guided, so that we become happier, more gentle, more loving, and more peaceful people. And we bless that which is in front of us. We bless that which is behind us. We bless that which is to the right of us. We bless that which is to the left of us. We bless that which is above us. And we bless that which is below us. We are constantly in the sacred circle of infinite spirit. Perfectly safe and protected and always guided. And for this, we are very grateful. And together we say, blessed be. Many times through the day, I tend to notice myself judging people. And I'm sure everybody can relate to that. Not always big judgments, little judgments, like that person's annoying, that person's this, that person's that. And that's just sort of normal. I mean, that's what the mind does. But I noticed that it's not super normal to question that. We just assume that we're right. We have this momentary sense of superiority where we have the vantage point that we can judge people. And the other day I was noticing that and I remember thinking to myself, and who are you to judge? Who are you to judge that person? How do you know? How do you know what they're going through? How do you know that their behavior is, isn't something that is a, a result of, of some pain rather than, I mean, they didn't just wake up one morning and decide to be a jerk. They didn't just wake up one morning and say, oh, I think I'm going to annoy Ariel today. Right? So, it's really important, I think, for us to, to recognize how powerful and how uh, harmful to ourselves it is to carry these kinds of judgments. Because we're trying to do something when we judge. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an indicator to us that we are trying to do something that we aren't capable of doing. And doing something that you're incapable of doing is a recipe for disappointment. And very oftentimes we go around very dissatisfied with ourselves, with our lives, with the world. And we think we're at the effect of it. And we don't recognize that we might be the cause of a lot of that. And that we don't really think that the ideas that we bring into relationships that are judgmental are the cause of great harm to our well-being and to our peace of mind. We just take it for granted. They're to this, they're to that. They upset me because they're wrong. I'm right. And we, you know, if we, I guess if we really verbalized it such, and we heard ourselves say it that way, we might question it. But our egos are much too sly for that. Our egos would like us to believe that we have the function 
of judgment available to us, that that is what, what we are here to do. We are here to judge who's good enough. But that's a smoke screen. It's a smoke screen. Our judgment our judgment of other people is our way of not looking at the fact that we have judged ourselves. We have judged ourselves and we've done it wrongly. Just like we don't have the capability of judging another person, we don't have the capability of judging ourselves. I think a lot of times what happens is when we when we're presented with somebody with bad behavior or, or, or seemingly bad behavior, apparently bad behavior, our, our first response to that is usually judgment. And th- this is why that's so dangerous. And this is why it's so detrimental to us is because we assume that we know why they're behaving the way they're behaving. It's because they're a jerk. It's because they're mean. It's because they're annoying. It's because of whatever reason we we throw at them. But how could we know why they're acting the way that they do? How would we have the data to know that? How would we even how would we even start to know why they're doing what they're doing? The judgment that we bring to the situation is our tactic to reinforce the ego's idea that we are separate from our good. Because if we're separate from our good, then we must also be separate from other people. And the way to prove that we're separate from other people is based on the fact that their behavior is bad or their behavior is not good enough for us. Or their presence is not good enough for us. Sometimes we just don't like people for no reason. Sometimes we judge people for no reason other than their physical appearance, the way they dress, how much weight they carry, how pretty they are, how unattractive they are. You know, what kind of body they have, if they're in shape, if they're not in shape. We judge them by their hairstyle. We judge them by their a choice of uh, accessories. We judge whether they have tattoos or not. And we don't think that that's harmful to judge people like that. We don't even consider it. We just don't even notice that we're doing it half the time or not even half the time. I would say the bulk of the time. And we never consider, I'm really digging myself into a pit here. <laughs> Every time I do this, I'm, I'm really reinforcing an illusion. And then we get so upset at the, at the way life is to us. We get so upset about the way the world is. And we have absolutely no idea that we have carved it out to be just that way. Every single day of our lives, based on the fact that based on the, on, on the, on the ways that we judge people, the judgment that we throw at people. And like I said, if we were to really verbalize our judgments, a lot of the times we would be shocked at the things that we think of other people. And we might even reconsider, you know, so the, the, the ego mind is very well programmed. The ego is not, as I always try to remind us, an entity It's not something to be feared. It's not something that was created for us. It's something that we made up. It's, it's, it's our own creativity that we've used for a very nefarious purpose. And that's to try to prove that we're not good enough to try to prove that we are separate from all good. And the way that you can prove that you're not good enough is to hide the fact that you don't think you're good enough by making other people not good enough. That way you, you, you've got sort of a double illusion going on there and it's really hard to figure it out. It's really hard to figure out that you're the source of a lot of it, if not all of it. So every time we, we, every time we allow ourselves to judge another person based on absolutely no criteria whatsoever, just by, by whatever whim happens to be crossing our mind at that time, every time we allow ourselves to do that, we dig ourselves deeper and deeper and deeper into the illusion into the separation, into all of the lies that we have programmed our ego to try to prove to us. So trying to escape from the 
the, this illusory world is very difficult, if not impossible, if we continue that practice of judging other people. Because we don't have that facility available to us, at least not in this world. We can't judge people. We can't. We don't know enough. We, there's no way we, we could ever possibly get the data together, or even if we could, which we can't, but even if we could, to understand the data as to why somebody is the way they are. So what we have to remind ourselves at every turn, and it takes a lot of practice at first, is that if something appears to us as being less than perfect, it's because we've judged it to be that based on our own faulty data based on our own faulty data. Now, if someone's really misbehaving, if somebody's really, really misbehaving, and you're not just being mean about their, you know, about their appearance or whatever, you, you're, you're judging the fact that they're, that they're being awful to you or to somebody else. You still don't understand, and you're still not in the position to judge. As much as you'd like to believe that you are, that's, that's the type of arrogance that's really, really tough to give up. It's like a, it's like a drug addiction. You can't, you can't understand why they are the way they are. But there are a couple of criteria that you can follow so that you don't get on the wrong track and you don't keep uh, digging yourself deeper and deeper and deeper into the illusion. And that is this, that infinite spirit is the source of all. There's one source, there's one substance, there's one force, and there's one power in all the universe. And every single soul is a divine extension of light, of this, of this love. Just like beams of light radiating, radiating, radiating out of a central star or a central sun. Each beam is unique, and each beam is perfect, exactly the way it is. Now, if that beam does not appear to be shining brightly, <laughs> if that beam does not appear to be expressing its divinity, it's not because it stopped being divine. It's because it started being scared. And it doesn't know that soul that I'm mean, sorry that mind doesn't know that it's a soul that's that's perfect just the way it is it doesn't know that and so because it doesn't know that or it forgot that it's trying to get its needs met in whatever grasping neurotic way it possibly can and it's going to probably not do a very good job of it because it's not being informed by wisdom. It's being informed by madness. The idea that you're separate from the sun, of, uh, the idea of a, of a sunbeam separating itself from a sun and going off by itself, that sounds ludicrous, right? It sounds insane. How could that even happen? But that's exactly what we think. That's why we are insane. That's why this whole world is insane, as we really believe <laughs> we're little separate beams of sun going off doing our own thing. And we're living in this bizarre nightmare, right? So when somebody is when somebody's misbehaving as far as what we're, you know, that's our judgment of this situation, what what the truth always is, is if they're not if they're not coming at a situation shining their love as as a, as as an extension of the of the source of all it's because they're confused it's because they're afraid it's because they don't know who they are so you reinforcing their confusion by either verbally or not verbally judging them as being bad or less than or not good enough no matter how warranted your ego tells you it is, you're not doing them any good and you're doing yourself a huge disservice because you then are deciding to 
indulge in the same madness that they are portraying. That your ego won't tell you that. Your ego will say, oh, well, you're the, you're the most sane one here because you're seeing how, how crazy they are. You're the nice one because you're recognizing how bad they are. You're the good one because you're recognizing how evil they are or whatever it happens to be. But that's, the, that's, a, that's a, a trick. That's a very sly little trick that, that that part of our mind has to keep us separate to keep us believing that we're separate because that's what we've programmed that part of our, that that's a big thought form that we've programmed our, our minds to do is to, to prove to us how separate we are, prove to us that we're not good enough, prove to us all of these, all of these erroneous ideas. And so of course, when we let that part of our mind judge other people, it'll try to convince us that we're superior and they're inferior. But what in reality we're doing by judging them is moving into their illness with them and we're going to just go be sick together so that's the that's the danger of judgment even little judgments do that to us there's no little or big from the world of spirit you're either on the beam or you're not on the beam and if you're not on the beam it's not that you're not on the beam it's that you've fallen asleep to the beam and you don't even know the beam's there so ultimately, none of it matters. I mean, ultimately, none of it matters because ultimately everybody is fine. Everybody's actually just fine. Everybody already loves each other. <laughs> everybody's shining. Everybody's functioning perfectly. Everybody's in absolute bliss. But we're asleep to that reality. And instead of that reality, we're concocting this reality. And that's where we are right now. So we have to... We have to gently awaken to the truth. And in the meantime, what we have to do is we have to recognize that we're dreaming. We have to recognize that not everything is as it seems. And we have to allow ourselves to have um, ourselves be taught by a guidance that's smarter than we are at this moment that's wiser than we are at this moment, a guidance that is outside of this this need to judge, this need to judge other people because <clears throat> the ego really doesn't care if you're judging yourself or whether you're judging other people as long as what you're doing is reinforcing the the illusion that everybody's separate, everybody's everybody's upset, nothing good is happening, you know, and 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 it knows, I mean, the ego's, the ego's just, the, the, again, the ego is your genius used against yourself. So it's not stupid. It's just insane. Okay. There's a difference. It's a, it's a mad genius. So the ego knows that it can't get too bad because if it gets too bad, then you're going to abandon the whole thing and call on a higher power to help you. Right. So it would rather just keep distracting you. Rather just keep distracting you and and keep you keep you interested in these little so-called gifts that it has for you, and these gifts are things like, isn't she a bitch? Isn't he ugly? Don't you hate it when she does that? Why does this always happen to me? What is wrong with me? Look at how horrible I am. Look at how stupid I was. Don't you hate the way that she wears her hair? That's what the ego has you preoccupied with, looking at your differences, looking at, looking at how you're separate, looking at why nothing is good enough. Nothing is ever going to be good enough. Why? Because then you're looking at the illusion and not the truth. Because if you were to really look honestly at whoever you're judging, you would look past all that behavior, whether or not it truly is bad behavior. I mean, that, that that's up, depends on the circumstance. You'd look be, beyond that behavior and recognize that they are just the same kind of pure love that you are. They just are expressing it in a way that's very unique. Now, maybe they are expressing it in a sick way. So again, if somebody is being loving to you and, 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 and they're on the beam, you know, and you're judging them. That's just a, a proof to you that you are addicted to the judgment and that you, what you want to do is find reasons to separate yourself. 
But it gets a lot more sly than that because when they are misbehaving or they are doing things which seem really off, you know, they're either violent or, 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 you know, dishonest or they're whatever it is, whatever it is, but you, you can have a case against them that, that, that uh, you're the judge and the jury. You know, you have a, an airtight case against them and maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Their, their behavior was hideous. But that's not the truth of what's happening. The truth of what's happening is that they are a, 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 a beam of pure love that got lost in their own mind. They got trapped in their own mind and they're doing whatever they can do to do to try to get their needs met, to try to get through the day in a way that they understand. That's the truth. And you're judging them doesn't do them any good. And it definitely doesn't do you any good. If you accept your role here, if you really accept your mission here, you recognize that you have a certain set of talents. You have a certain way about you that's very unique. You have a certain sort of genius about you that nobody else quite possesses. And when you can find what that is and you, you're, you're really living your passions and you're really doing what you're here to do, you'll notice that you're on the beam of your life's purpose. But why, why does spirit have all that for you while you're, while you're living in this world of illusion? What's the purpose of all of that? So that spirit can send people to you that aren't as on the beam as you are so that you can help and you don't help them by, by figuring out what's wrong with them and, and (laughs) and trying to fix it. You help them by seeing who they really are behind all of the nonsense, behind the unloving behavior, behind the unloving speech. That's your job is to, is to ask to be guided and led to who they really are. And then what you're doing for them is immense. That's true healing right there is seeing beyond the symptom and into the truth. If you can see beyond the symptom and into the truth, then you've got, you're witnessing the truth. And when one person can witness the truth in the presence of another person, the lie can't hold up. It can't, it can't stay. It might appear to stay for a period of time, but in, in for all intents and purposes, it's over. The gig is up. The jig is up. So I know it's a tall order and I'm not saying that you can never judge another person again. That's not, that's not practical. You are going to. You are going to, because that's, that's the ego's job is to judge, 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 judge. But when you're judging someone and you recognize it as such, you can say, I'm not thinking from spirit. I'm not, I'm not thinking from my spirit. I'm not thinking from my soul. My soul doesn't judge. It can't judge. It's not here to judge. It's not its function. My teacher, my inner guide can judge. But what that, what, what my inner guide judges is whether something is worthy of me or not. And the inner guide will never say, isn't she a jerk? Your inner guide is never going to say, that person, you know, they might say you need to, you know, like if you're you're in an abusive relationship, your, your guidance might say you need to separate physical proximity for the time being. You know, the, the, it might be that it might, it, 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 there, there are times when, when it's, let's do no contact with this person, you know, but that doesn't mean that you don't still recognize that they are pure love, that they're an extension of pure love and that they, that they're going through some insanity, you know, and it's not necessarily your job to to make them sane again, but it is your job to recognize that that's not who they are. You're not judging them. You're doing what needs to be done in the moment to to protect yourself. And you're listening to wisdom when you do that. 
And that happens sometimes where we have to, where we have to, you know, break off a, a relationship where we have to, um, you know, separate physical proximity for whatever reason. That is very often the most appropriate thing. A lot of times you have to say no to people. You, a lot of times you have to set boundaries. A lot of times there's things to do in the physical world that you do to 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 get things in uh, aligned in such a way that that it's safe and appropriate. But that still doesn't mean you're judging them. It still doesn't mean that you're judging them. If somebody if somebody is very sick with COVID nineteen, let's say, or the flu. You don't judge them for it. You don't hate them for it, but you do quarantine them. You do, you do, you know, you isolate the problem, but you don't hate them. You don't blame them for getting sick, right? But it's the same thing when it's anything else. It's still sickness. It's still sickness. When somebody is uh, acting in a way that's an attack, it's a type of sickness. But you judging them is an attack. Your judgment of them is an attack. And every time there's an attack, there, you're inviting a retaliation. And so we go through these, we go through our lives with attack, retaliation, attack, retaliation, attack, retaliation. And all of it's based on the fact that we're judging other people people. And all of that is just a nasty old game to keep our illness alive. Illness has its own survival instinct. But remember, a virus needs a host. A parasite needs a host. Eventually, the host can get healthy enough that it flicks off the virus. It flicks off the parasite. And the same is true for these spiritual parasites. So recognize that the judgment that we hold against other people, no matter how large or small, is very toxic, and it's not good for us, and it's never spirit's will for us. Thank you for spending a little time with me today. I really appreciate you being here. I can't wait to work with you again. Much love and many, many blessings. Mm-hmm.